Okay, we're going live in three seconds. I think we are live. Okay, I think we're live. So uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for joining this first, very first day of the very first edition of Mobile Growth Summit online. Um, it's going to be a very interesting day, and that uh, we're starting obviously by with Asia. I just want to introduce our first uh, speaker, Jenny. She, she has like a very unique uh, background while being in entertainment and media, the corner, the cornerstone of entertainment and media. She's been uh, leading uh, in the entertainment world and media for 20 years before joining Twitter. And now what best uh, we could uh, have as a, an introduction, as a keynote, while the, like uh, introducing um, the tech for good and how we can, in this uh, world, have a better impact using technology and, uh, and uh, having a better uh, solution for people. So putting the people first, I'll, like, I'll let uh, Jenny to introduce herself, getting, and then I will hand up to her, to her right now. Excellent, thank you. I'm super, super excited to be here today kicking off this virtual conference. It's obviously a little bit different and a little bit odd in this new world that we're, we're living in. I wish I could see you all in person and I really love you know being in the room with, with everyone at a conference and feeling that energy, but here we are in this new virtual world. So we'll test it all out together. So on that note, I'm actually going to turn my camera off while I'm presenting just to make sure that the, um, the stream stays crystal clear and then I'll turn it back on for the, for the Q&A at the end. So um, just wanted to let you all know that. So I'm just going to do that now just to make sure the audio doesn't drop out. Um, here we go, let's see. Oh, um. Okay. Okay, so hopefully everybody can see these slides here. I'll just as assume that you can. And if, if you can't see them for any reason, please pop a comment into the chat section. Um, so again, I, today I'm talking about operating successful business with a social conscience, something that is really top of mind for everyone, I think, especially in the in the challenging world that we find ourselves in right now. So I wanted to start with a story first. And this is Delene here in the red. She is in her 70s. Delene lost her husband and her son and now lives by herself about 30 minutes outside of Melbourne, Victoria, here in Australia. And feeling lonely one weekend, Delene put herself out there asking if any of her neighbors would like to meet up for a coffee on a Sunday. She was absolutely floored by the response. She had about 14 people, none of whom knew each other, turn up. They sat talking for more than three hours. Some had breakfast, some just had a cup of tea, but they all had one thing in common, which was that they were really longing true, meaningful social interaction. So Delene decided to turn the meeting into a weekly breakfast club. The club quickly grew in size and she had about more than 50 people turn up. Now Delene's breakfast club has been running every Sunday for nearly two years. There are new faces every week, but also regulars who come back time and time again. She's even had two couples meet and fall in love, and one is even engaged. That's actually Robin and Jenny there on the left and Dave and Jeanette on the right there. I've attended several of Delene's breakfast meetings, and one thing that initially surprised me is that the people they arrange in all ages, ethnicities, and genders. Everyone is truly welcome, and they're a group of normal, everyday people just having a laugh and a chat like longtime friends. If you didn't tell me otherwise, I would have thought that they've actually known each other for years. But in fact, the only thing that they had in common before meeting was that they live in the same neighborhood. It's amazing how much we all stay in our lanes. If we think about it, Facebook connects you to people that you already know. Twitter connects you to people based on your interests. And LinkedIn connects you to people in your own business circles. But what if you removed those preconceived connections? How would you actually build connections with people that you don't know? That's where Nextdoor comes in. We connect you based on proximity and not preference. Delene and her friends found each other on Nextdoor. When asked why she put that first post on Nextdoor and not on other networking platforms, 
Delene says that she felt safe on next door. She felt she could share more because she knew who she was talking to, her neighbors. The world is becoming increasingly isolating. It's like we've forgotten how to socialize, how to talk to people, and how to be courteous. We have to be reminded that there's nothing wrong with just saying hello to a stranger and that being friendly is okay. Last year, a study by the Australian Psychological Society referred to our situation here as a loneliness epidemic. And it's only getting worse. New research from Monash University shows that COVID-19 has impacted mental health negatively, with more people feeling lonely than ever before, and 30% of people showing moderate to high levels of depression and anxiety. But the reality is that people were already struggling with depression, loneliness, and anxiety. Beyond Blue Ambassador Lisa says, that trepidation and fear that so many people are feeling now for the first time is something we're living with all the time. Research shows that loneliness is related more to the quality than the quantity of relationships. A lonely person feels that their relationships are not meaningful and that he or she is not understood by others. But aren't we all more connected now than we've ever been before? In an article written by BBC journalist Cecily Alexandria, where she's talking about Facebook, she says, thinking about all of those groups and all of the ways I'm supposedly connected, it makes me feel oddly disconnected. Many of us have hundreds of so-called friends or followers, but how many of them do we actually spend time with? She goes on to say, I'm connected to everyone, but my community is actually very small. There's a group of people I meet up with every week, and that's community to me. Social conscience is defined as a sense of responsibility or concern for the problems of society. Part of operating with a social conscience means putting yourself in your customer's shoes. How do they think? What do they need? Why are they choosing our product over others? I listened to a fantastic podcast with the CMO of Walgreens, Vineet Mira, just last week. He was asked about the key to success, and his answer was, you need a combination of digital magic and human touch to really connect with consumers. Algorithms are not going to solve the situation. A social conscience is what keeps you on track. It's your morals that define the decisions that you make. If your company is focused solely on making money, chances are you will meet an unhappy ending. You may remember in 2016, when it came out that Wells Fargo had created more than 3.5 million fake accounts just to multiply their profits. Or Dieselgate, when Volkswagen was caught lying about clean diesel vehicles and had even created cheating software to get them past emissions testing. It cost them more than $25 billion in fines. According to the Global Corporate Sustainability Report, 66% of consumers are willing to spend more on a product if it comes from a sustainable brand. When only considering millennials, that number jumps to 73%. Numbers like these prove that you can be profitable and purposeful. If you're focused squarely on profit without worrying about how to earn it conscientiously, you're only doing half your job. Nextdoor was created with social responsibility at its core. In the book Bowling Alone, author Robert Putnam examined the decline of social capital, pointing out how much connecting with your community matters. He concluded that social networks in a neighborhood lower crime, improve public health, and raise test scores. After reading Bowling Alone, the co-founders of Nextdoor realized that they could use technology for good. Instead of technology pushing people apart, they were going to use it to bring people back together in a true and meaningful way, and it's working. Sometimes it's as simple as sharing or swapping goods with your neighbors out of the goodness of your heart. Someone in the neighborhood has a lemon tree. They post that they're leaving a bowl of lemons on their front steps and people can take as many as they want. The thread gets full of thank yous, and then you see someone reply that they've left a pumpkin in exchange. It all ends with the original lemon person then replying that they cooked an amazing dinner with the pumpkin, paying it forward. 
Here, a dad needed some diapers, or nappies as they're called in Australia, for his six-month-old baby. The baby was sick, so he didn't want to go out to the shops, and his neighbors came to the rescue. Or this post, where a woman with immune deficiency needed her dog walked, and her neighbors lended a hand. Then there's the man who mows his late neighbor's lawn weekly, a simple but powerful act of kindness. Or someone cheering up the entire neighborhood with some live music performed by neighbors. Stories like these happen every day in nearly every next door neighborhood. Every single one of these posts, every single neighbor that joins next door is building a new node of social capital. A recent Nextdoor survey found that 79% of members would help a neighbor in need, and 75% would spend at least an hour per week to help a neighbor. 78% of Nextdoor members have two or more neighbors they can rely on in a time of need, while only 56% of the general public does. Without me telling you anything else about Nextdoor, those member stories give you a good sense of our brand and what our role in society is. Next door is a warm welcome. Our purpose is to cultivate a kinder world where everyone has a neighborhood to rely on. We connect people in a different and unusual way. Our users tend to share more than they do on other platforms and they lend a helping hand. We believe that kindness is contagious. So how do we reach your heart and your mind while also keeping the company afloat? Firstly, we're built on trust. 100% of our users are name and address verified, so you can be sure that you're talking to a real person at a real address in your local community. The trust and safety of our users is something we hold paramount to success. Making sure everyone uses a real name and a real address creates accountability and discourages potential keyboard war warriors. Think about it. If you aren't going to say something bad about your neighbor down the street, if they can see your real name and your address. With a frictionful onboarding process, we make our users feel safe and uphold our trusted reputation for brands and everyday people. But it also means we made a conscious decision as a company to sacrifice faster growth. We're grounded in hyperlocality. Nextdoor is private to your neighborhood and not accessible by anyone outside of where you live. Combined with real names and real addresses, this creates a sense of safety, trust, and belonging, which then leads to opening up more, sharing more, and also offering help more. And we put kindness first. Nextdoor has clear community guidelines to combat negative behavior. We encourage kindness and positivity in everything we do. For example, last year, we launched the Kindness Reminder, which filters out for potentially offensive words or terms that may violate our community guidelines. When this pop-up module is served to users, more than 50% of them edit or delete their post. We didn't have to reinvent, reinvent our business or our value proposition when the pandemic hit. In fact, it only got stronger. We saw an 80% lift in daily active users globally in the last month. Here in Australia, not only is our growth at an all-time high, but we've seen more than a 200% increase in conversation on the platform and a 247% increase in high-quality connections between neighbors since early February. In terms of crisis and chaos, people tend to turn to those closest to them as their first line of support, and this is often their neighbors. Whether it's sharing supplies, mental health support in the way of a simple call or daily check-in, lending a helping hand, or just showing your support for others, next door becomes a lifeline. Could we be growing much faster than we are? Sure, but we'd have to sacrifice our social conscience and our company values. Instead, we're doing it on our terms, and we're doing a pretty good job. In the last two years, we've expanded to eight additional countries, bringing the total number of next door markets to 11. We're in more than 260,000 neighborhoods worldwide. Our latest valuation was 2.1 billion US dollars, proving that we're growing at a healthy pace that allows us to stay true to our purpose. But I'm sure you're all wondering how we make our money. That's the question everyone loves to ask me. <laughs> We have natural advantages in building a scalable business model. 
Think about buying habits. 90% of consumers make purchases near their homes, and the majority of spending is driven by word of mouth conversations. When local businesses thrive, communities thrive. If local residents support local businesses, it only makes the neighborhood stronger. And this has only been exaggerated in the time of COVID. Neighbors are leaning on each other and local businesses are leaning on neighbors too. In a survey we did in April, local business owners told us they need customers to stay loyal and local and to share the word about their business within their online networks. Neighbors are also increasingly hiring other neighbors for jobs. In Australia, we've seen more than a 10x increase in simple jobs that people need help with around the house. Landscapers, tutors, nannies, and more. We give local business owners a way to communicate with potential customers in their area, which helps put money back into the neighborhood. We also work with select national brands that align with our values and mission to build stronger communities. Conversations have shifted as we all start to move towards this new normal, but the focus on local is clear. Local has become a global phenomenon. Help and kindness are trending and brands want to be a part of the new normal. Optimism is prominent. The world is a very different place than it was just a few months ago. According to the most widely cited study on forming new habits, one published by the European Journal of Social Psychology, it takes an average of 66 days to form a new habit. After approximately 66 days, it becomes automatic or part of your second nature. Looking at successful companies, you'll find that changing a daily habit is a common thread. Netflix changed the way we watched movies. Spotify changed the way we listened to music. It is possible to change people's daily habits if your value proposition is strong enough. Here at Nextdoor, we're reminding people that kindness should be a daily habit. We're bridging the gap between online and offline connections. This quote from Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters just two weeks ago really sums up why Nextdoor exists. He said, we are all indeed just people, people that need to connect with one another. We're human. We need moments that reassure us that we're not alone, that we're understood, that we're imperfect, and most importantly, that we need each other. The world is changing. We're changing our daily habits from how we connect with friends and family to how we work. But making an impact is something that remains imperative. If you're not impacting people's daily lives in some way, your company simply won't last. And if you want to have a positive impact on the world, you must separate yourself from the crowd. I think this quote sums it all up perfectly. Never underestimate the valuable and important difference that you make in every life that you touch. For the impact you make today has a powerful rippling effect on every tomorrow. Thank you. I don't know if Steph is, is Steph still here? <laughs> I don't know, it seems like maybe maybe Steph has, has gone somewhere else, but I'm happy to take Hello. any questions. I think he's going to jump in. Oh, here he is. <laughs> but, yep, I can hear you. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm not, I'm not sure if he's still here, but I am happy to take any questions if anyone has, has any questions. Okay, sorry about that. Like, uh, uh, it's not really user with the format. Anyways, uh, I would have like a few questions uh, for you then if the audience is a little bit shy to send some questions. <laughs> um, I was just like wondering, listening to your uh, to your uh, uh, presentation, for the impact on on the on the marketers which are here for 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 them is like, do you think it's more about like the format, the content, the messaging, and the story, um, the platform, the service itself? A I, we understand that it's a combination of of everything, but for for you, 
knowing that like the, the big change is coming and it's it's on the way how do you uh, how do you foresee it what would be have yeah. more impact? yeah i think it's uh, as you said a little bit of everything but i think you know if you're at a company that doesn't already have social responsibility and and a social conscience at its core then i think it comes down to the fact that whatever team you're on, you can still make a difference regardless of whether or not your company is necessarily grounded in that. And I think that's where your role and 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 that's why and I'm glad I've left this this slide up here. Like it's about every single person and their role being empowered to actually have that social conscience and perform their um, you know, their their piece of the pie with that in mind. And so I think even if you find yourself at a company that you maybe feel like their values are not aligned with yours or or not um, built on social responsibility, I think you can still make a difference in your own role. And so if you're in, for example, a content role, then that's about how you're um, focusing that content to address that issue. So I hopefully that answers your question. But I think there's definitely, it's definitely a little bit of everything. What about like the, the business model itself? I mean, like you cannot change the impact if only on the messaging or on the marketing. I mean, the marketing is the surface, but um, do you think we should have like this? It, it has like to have an impact across the board, correct? So mm -hmm. um, how do you see our marketers in impacting the, 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 the model and the business itself? Yeah, I think that you have to arm yourself in data. I mean, I think anytime you're trying to make a, a change at a company, like you've got to back up your theory with with data and analytics. So I think if you find yourself on that team that's trying to push that change through your company, if your company is not already there, then it comes down to you making a really um, supported argument essentially as to why it should go in that direction. So I think, but I, I do think that at every company, you know, people that work in the marketing arm have such a powerful position. So I think everyone that's here should feel empowered to do that. But I do think that backing up your your theory and your strategy with data is important. Okay, so that comes down to uh, to this question for the audience itself. Um, what would you what would be your two cents for the audience to integrate and uh, and having being um, really um, using it uh, thoroughly and, uh, and impactfully for their own business. So you mean, I'm not sure I understand the question. Do you mean like if they have their well, own business, how do they integrate with this like a tech for good and, and all you said in, into their marketing mix and how they they should uh, be using it and like uh, to, uh, to have a better impact and have a better business. Yeah. Well, I return. I think one thing that's really important to keep in mind is that you don't have to change the world overnight, especially. So there's little things that you can change that can make a difference. And so, and I'll use the, the kindness reminder that I mentioned as a good example, where that's actually a, a product update, right? That's a, a small, well, I shouldn't say small, but that's a, a change to a product that we were able to implement without building new teams or building a new value prop or anything like, like that. So I think you can make changes and make an impact without necessarily doing something that requires like super heavy lifting. And often small changes can be just as impactful, if not more impactful than the big ones. So I think that's the other important thing to keep in mind is that when we talk about making an impact, think about what you can start with in your own personal role first, because you know, you're not gonna be able to change necessarily the company's direction or the, or the company's value proposition, but there are probably things that you can change in your own role and even on your own team. And that, that might even be as simple as your own management style. Like how can you impact your team necessarily? Maybe it's not the actual product, but maybe it's just how you manage your own team with, with a social conscience and with social responsibility. So I think that's important to keep in mind. Um, and then again, as far as like setting the strategy and, and how do you put yourself on a path that chases you know social responsibility. I think that for most people, as you grow through your career, and this was certainly true for myself, working for a company that shares your morals and your values becomes increasingly important. And so I think if you find yourself at a company where there's a disconnect and you 
don't feel that those those values and those morals are shared, then over time you will soon become less passionate about your role. And so I think it is important to make sure that you take a step back and just think about like, is this the right place for me anyway? Um, but then if it is, then start thinking about what you can do as an individual to make an impact. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. I mean, we still have like a bit less than five minutes. Um, I will see if there is any other questions from the audience. Otherwise, if you you have anything to add or anything that you want to share more on the personal level or 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 like uh, to tell the audience, please please do so. Otherwise, we're I think we're pretty much uh, reaching the end of uh, of the of the of the session. Well, I don't know. There's people raising their hands. I don't know if that means they're asking a question. I haven't used this software before or if they're just, you know, high fiving me. But uh, there's people I know there's people raising their hands. So maybe if you do have a question, I think you're supposed to put it in the Q&A section. Is that right? I see like it's more like comments than anything. Uh, like people okay. are like raising their hands and saying like, uh, good job, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry, haven't used this this platform before, so not sure about that. Well, I um, feel like commenting like awesome presentation, great presentation, <laughs> awesome presentation. Well, thank, thank you for that. <laughs> um, let's see. I feel like in in the last two minutes, is there anything else that I can say? I mean, I think I'd say that um, you know, it's certainly like the the place that we all find ourselves in with this new you know COVID nineteen challenge that everyone around the world is facing together at the same time. I think it's a great time to put yourself in business issues and really pay attention to the world around you and think about like what is the value that you have in this ever changing world. And I think. That's something really interesting that's come out of the current, you know, crisis really and pandemic that we all find ourselves in is like, what what is the place for that company that you work for and for that business that you're in? And how can you, you know, make a difference and be a part of this new normal? So I think it's a great time for this for this talk and for this topic to be raised and to really be thinking about that. Okay. That's like, I think that that closed the, in a very nice manner. And uh, I hope the, uh, everyone uh, here got a little bit more conscious and uh, will, will help us to build a better world and, uh, and uh, being more efficient in, in the way that we address the market, whatever product or services we're, we're offering to, uh, to the world. Excellent. Well, happy to reach out, uh, happy to answer any other questions if people think of them later, like feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or wherever. So yeah, happy to do that as well. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, Jenny. Thank you.